I'm not even going to get into bio. We're getting into star seeds, where you're from. There's going to be a Syrian channeling. There's going to be so much information. This is going to be an epic call. We're diving in. Matthew, John, welcome. Tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are, and let's get into the information, which is you're, we're going to start with a really big portal that's opened as well. So y'all, yeah. before you go in, y'all, you're all going to want to hang out. We're going to take live calls. There's going to be a Syrian transmission towards the later part of the call yep. that you're going to be in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Uh, this is a really exciting night. As you already mentioned, and as I've been telling people, tonight is the first time I will ever be transmitting a direct trans-channeling of a group of five very wise Syrian extraterrestrial beings that I have been doing some channeling with in my private groups, which people buy the packages, you can join in. I do it once a month. This is the first time doing it publicly. So it's a very exciting night. I'm already feeling this energy of being lifted and kind of just getting the, you know, the tingles already. So it's, it's really exciting. Hmm. So let's go in a little bit. You can you help people navigate to understand their star seed origins. Yeah. How, how is it that you, and we're, I just want to get a brief explanation of how it is that you do that, how people guide it and how that helps them. And then let's get into the current energies and these portals that are opening up. So first a little bit about me, you know, I have been on this journey as we all have, uh, for me, it's been, I, you know, a decade and a half or so. And early on in the journey, I became interested in, you know, first the idea of extraterrestrials, I kind of always felt like, yeah, there's got to be something out there, you know, it can't just be us, that wouldn't make any sense. But then when I first came across this term star seeds, just randomly on the internet, I, I just knew that this is me. I, I, it was an undoubtable feeling. And as soon as I came across the word Syrians, I remember perusing some website and it, it happened to be the day after I had actually done a plant medicine ceremony. So I happened to be in this elevated state and i guess my guides were you know knew i was ready for it so they kind of had me peruse some random old website that looked like it was made with geo cities in 1998 and as soon as i came across the term syrians i'm like that's me i just know it i don't know how i knew it but i just knew it and then i just googled as much as i could on the syrians there really wasn't a lot at the time there still isn't a ton out there actually i'm, I'm trying to add to you know the the information that's out there about the Syrians because there isn't a ton. There's more about the Pleiadians. There's a lot more books that have been channeled, you know, from the Pleiadians, et cetera. But I just knew that was me. So further on, you know, fast forward when life, my guides led me to start practicing my spiritual work as a career full time, which I'm really amazingly lucky to be able to to do. I really wanted to to figure out how I could help open up this dimension of the starseed self for others. I remember one day sitting at my parents' house on a swing and just, I don't know, it was just, it felt like, you know, let me know in the Zoom uh, chat if you've ever had this experience of where you felt just something was downloaded through you or into you and you weren't sure what it is. It's as if you receive something. I know, John, you know this feeling. We, we've talked yeah. about it, you know, many times. But you feel like you've just received something. You're not really sure what it is. Well, in that moment, I actually, with that energetic receiving, I had this inspiration to do, and I, I had the name of it, and, and I called it a Starseed Discovery Session. And I took out my laptop, and I started just typing, and I kind of channeled through this uh, script to lead people on a hypnosis journey into the stars. And I started practicing that. And for a while, that was really the only way that I was able to access where someone is from in the stars by leading them through a hypnosis journey. Well, I started realizing that because I was already doing a lot of psychic work and a reading that I, another thing that was downloaded through me called soul plan readings. And I'm, I'm able to see people's life plans. I'm able to read soul contracts. I'm able to look into past lives. And I just asked myself the question, well, why can't I just see where someone is from? Maybe I don't even need the hypnosis se session. And I started practicing and, and absolutely I'm able to see 
very clearly where someone is from in the stars. If they're a star seed, there are a few people that aren't. And we can, you know, talk about that if you'd like. But if you are a star seed, I'm going to be able to see where you're from, whether it's in this galaxy or outside the galaxy. And the exciting thing is we're going to do readings today, right? Uh, and I'll, I'll let you know if you raise your hand. And and for me, as you say, that what we're really here to do is to build our, our own sacred space. And as mm -hmm. we build that sacred space, we actually become temple for others. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and that's such a necessary reminder because this is the way the ascension takes place. The ascension is an individual process for all of us, but at the same time, as we are evolving and as our vibration is rising, we are then transmitting that into the field. And we're all connected into one field, plants, animals, humans, etc., regardless of how awakened one or how not awakened one might be. So our presence, and our conscious evolution is one of the main actual catalysts for others that we may, that may not even be geographically near us to enter into their own conscious ascension processes. It happens because we're all connected in that field. So Matthew, how can someone find out whether they're a star seed or not, or maybe even oh, some yeah. uh, confusion or doubt around it because it seems so far out there that it's kind of hard to kind of claim it yeah you know it's it's really exciting the work i do and i'm reminded of how exciting it is and when i'm on a forum like this on your show because there you know very few people still are talking about this very few you know sometimes we live in a little bit of an echo chamber being involved in the new age communities and we forget that you know if you go outside of the new age circles People have never heard of the term star seeds, or if they have, they, they don't know what it is, or they think it's silly just because it sounds silly, right? So we are on the cutting edge of this really important uh, piece of self-discovery, not just about ourselves, but about our entire planet, that as souls, we are seeded from the stars. That's what the term star seed means. It means as a soul, you evolved and you went up in vibration somewhere else, whether it be in the Milky Way galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, or some other galaxy, or you were a galaxy. <laughs> and regardless, you somehow made it here through, it's this, not to get too technical, I love to get technical being a, a Virgo moon, but uh, <laughs> this, this downstepping of vibration, it's like tuning a radio dial down from 103.9 all the way down to like 95.9 wherever we're at on earth which is a pretty low frequency so no matter how high you've ascended to again you could literally have ascended to being a galaxy which i believe you have been you and i saw that when we did our yeah. personal work together and down stepping all the way to being you know this little earth being with flesh and bones as we get higher you know we get to the fifth density or higher there's, we don't have the flesh and bones anymore. We have a holographic body. We can still appear to uh, to have form like the Syrians do, but we don't actually have blood and, and flesh and bones anymore. It's, it's simply a holographic projection because as the frequency goes up, there's more space between atoms and, and everything. There's more space and thus things are less solid. This is a holographic reality anyways. It just appears to be very solid because all the, the atoms and molecules are so close together. But regardless, being a star seed, yeah, not a lot of people know about it. If you have heard of it, you're ahead of the curve. If you already know, you know who you are, or you know for sure that you are one, you're definitely ahead of the curve. Um, I can tell you for sure. But some signs that you might be a star seed, first of all, fascination with the stars, you know, thus uh, the green screen behind me. You know, when I was a kid, long before I ever, I mean, first of all, I never, ever imagined, dreamed, or had any inclination that I, I would end up in the position I am as far as work. I would have much rather been a stand-up comedian or, or something in entertainment. Um, but, you know, I ended up here, uh, and, and even though I never had any spiritual inclinations, I was an atheist when I was younger, um, I still always had a fascination with the stars. And I always remember just wanting to sit outside at night and just observe and, and connect with, I remember being in Israel and just, I, I felt like I, I, some star like basically came into me looking back, I believe it was actually serious. And that, but that was before my, my spiritual awakening even happened. It was just these little 
uh, you know, inclination. So having a fascination with the stars and let me know in the Zoom chat, you know, uh, if, if that's you. Uh, also feeling like you don't necessarily vibe very naturally with how this planet acts or how this planet is by default. If you don't feel like you vibe very naturally with having money, with having governments, with, with ha you know, the type of um, way that we go about trying to heal the body through Western medicine, all of the, the kind of default things that, let's be honest, most people never question throughout their life. If you've always kind of felt this sense of, wow, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you've you know, ever felt like, wow, driving around gasoline cars that are polluting the planet doesn't make a ton of sense. You know, uh, going uh, by default that, you know, you have a gallbladder issue and they just want to cut it out. Obviously, you know, go talk to your doctor if you have that issue. But, you know, it very they're very quick to just do surgeries and, and use surgeries and drugs. And we don't we think that's silly. We remember thinking how silly that would be because we come from such a higher place somewhere else in the stars. So that's another main sign. And then really just finding. You know, I'm sure you've probably found by now that the types of media you're led to, you know, things like Beyond the Ordinary, thing, you know, people like me, people like John, books that you're led to, it's not, usually it's not by accident or it's never by accident. And just being led to this topic of star seeds is a pretty sure indication in and of itself that you probably are one. Amazing. So how do you guide people to find out where this soul is from the stars? Again, our session that we had was remarkable in the places. Yeah, that we kept we had to go way out and then come back in to land to one that resonated because that that ambassadorship that traveled to all these different places was definitely very prevalent. Uh, but the description of one particular system that I was from was the details that I received about that place and how they interact and what the place looks like and how people interact and and do what they do it was fascinating so how can people find out where from the stars they are Matthew on their own yeah yours yours was fascinating so that was uh what I call my star seed discovery sessions which is a hypnosis session that I still do offer in these packages, because we're getting people in immediately, we're offering the 20 minute readings where I'm going to see it for you. And you can also ask me anything else from who was I in past lives to what is my soul contract with this person to where am I going in the future to what is my purpose, et cetera. But, you know, I, I it is something I do offer in my other work is are those star seed discovery sessions. And and they are fascinating. And, and I don't know if you remember, uh, John, like you described what it was like to be a galaxy and to oh, yeah. create like yourself, like to create all the star systems. And you said something like it was it, it was like taking that first breath, like, right. It was like you were holding your breath and then like something like that, it, you said. Yeah, good memory. Great memory. It was I, and I can't even imagine, like, who, who could even think of the, the gravity of what it's like to be a, a literal galaxy mm. and to be creating star systems? Like, and it's an insane thought. And actually, you know, if you were just to look at it, you know, without having the experience, you might just kind of think that, oh, that's kind of crazy. That can't be real. Yeah. Right. But then even with logic, which I love logic, wh why not? Why, as souls, can we not come from being a planet or a star or a galaxy mm -hmm. and just have decided to have the experience of stepping down and becoming smaller just to have the experience of it and also to contribute in some way to wherever we are? And as star seeds, that's one of the main reasons that we come to Earth is we want to contribute something here. And that's one of the things I can actually enlighten people on today and in the 20 minute readings is as a star being, what did you intend on bringing here? What did you want to make sure that you contributed 
to the earth experience because there's something the work I'm doing right now, the work it's kind of meta, but the work I'm doing, you know, exposing people to their star origins and the higher aspects of self is a, absolutely a part of the work as a Syrian that I wanted to contribute here. That's wonderful. So Matthew, so we may recognize aspects of ourselves that really relate to a planetary system, to a galaxy, to different levels of consciousness as we label them, Pleiadian, Acturian, Syrian, Lurian, and, and so many other Andromeda, and it, it can go on and on. Um, and it's, there's a feeling, a sense of home by that kind of landing in us and releasing something. How does that finding out help us to connect with the different ET groups that interact with us as well, that interact with Earth, and but that are also interacting through us? So one of that's a great question. One of the exciting things is that when people first, you know, come across this guidance or or this inspiration that they are a star seed, at first they might have this kind of binary view of it. Oh, I'm either this or that. And so they, they might first identify with the Lyrans, with the Pleiadians, with the Syrians, with the Arcturians, et cetera. And they might not really understand why, you know what, like they read descriptions or they watch my stuff and they're like, oh, I also feel like that. I also feel like that. I also feel like that. Right. And one of the, the great things is in, in the packages, you get an overview of ET races where it's a three and a half hour recorded masterclass where I actually go over all the different types of et races that i've come across and that people i found people are star seeds from so that's a great way to also even before you get on the the private call with me you know uh, see where where you might be from feel into it right but you know it turns out um i would say having researched this stuff pretty extensively for six or seven years now i would say about 45 50 percent of people are from one place so they are they are directly from the Pleiades. They come here from or directly from Sirius, et cetera. While the other 50, 55 percent are actually from multiple places. And some, I'd say maybe 25 percent or so, 20, 25 percent. I call them galactic travelers because when we look into it, we see that, oh, their soul took so many different stopovers in the Milky Way. They were a Lyran. They were a Cassiopeia. They were, you know, a, a, a Yael. They were this and that. And usually these, these people come from the Andromeda galaxy originally. The reason so many star seeds, including myself, coming from the Andromeda galaxy originally, the reason that so many of us come from the Andromeda galaxy is because the Andromeda galaxy is our sister galaxy. So our scientists, NASA, et cetera, we know that the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy are on this very, very, very slow collision course. It's like uh, two snails, one's in California, one's in, in New York, and they're just walking towards each other. Very, very slowly, but eventually in billions of years, they'll reach each other. And that's what it's like with the Andromeda and the Milky Way, where eventually in billions of years, we're going to combine into one super galaxy. And we could say from a soul perspective, from an evolutionary perspective, that is actually the next step up in the evolution of the Milky Way herself as a being and of the Andromeda galaxy herself as a being. But the Andromeda galaxy exists at a slightly higher maybe even more than slightly, a higher vibration overall than the Milky Way. The Andromeda galaxy does not have to deal with, as far as I know from my research, does not anymore have to deal with any darkness or the negative virus of negative extraterrestrials that the Milky Way does. And that's a whole topic where, and I actually talk a little bit about that in the overview of ET race. I talk about the reptilians, I talk about the greys and the Anunnaki. And if people are interested in understanding the dark extraterrestrials, which is very fascinating, and a lot of Orion star seeds, you'll find I'm Orion uh, is part of my heritage as well. If you're an Orion star seed, you may find that you have this fascination and this this need to know and understand what the you know the Anunnaki are and what the reptilians are and why they're evil, because you have these ancient memories somewhere within your cells of being a part of the Orion planets that were attacked during the period of our galactic history which we refer to as the orion wars and so you'll have this sense of wanting to somehow balance out that karma a lot of these people are, are super interested and in, you know they, they kind of see themselves as freedom fighters or you know wanting to get to the truth of things and spread the real information about topics and uh they feel this real sense of needing to fight back against the dark 
But a lot of people are that galactic traveler archetype. So what's exciting is that even if you, you know, think that you're a Pleiadian, which you very well might be, or you think you're a Lyran or an Arcturian, there may actually be other pieces. And I like to see it in my mind. I'll, I'll actually ask to be shown um, kind of like a, a, a diagram where it's like, I'll see, okay, someone's original self, their, the oldest part of self is from the Andromeda galaxy. They came through the Lyran portal. There's this portal near the near Lyra where you can enter or exit the Milky Way. And it's almost like a gate. So they come in through the Lyran portal. And then I saw they were alive and then an Orion being and then an Arcturian being. And then from uh, the Arcturian star, they came directly to Earth. So there will be some place where you came from, but it doesn't mean it's all there is to your history. But it brings a sense of, of knowingness. It ignites something that has lived in you. And it's like having that piece really acts as a catalyst for consciousness here. One thing I want to get into before we get into the starseed, our sole purpose is starseeds. Why? What's our mission here? And things. One thing that's I hear over and over again, and it's been so personal because I have so much compassion, is the people who say that they're not from here, they can't believe that they're here, and they just want to. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. And how do you, how is it that you bring a soothing understanding? Yeah. As to their human existence, because again, it, for those people who are so empathic and so wanting to feel at home, that it makes it more tolerable to, to be incarnate when all they want to do is check out of their body. I think that I'm really, really glad you asked that because it's such a practical thing that we feel as star seeds. And I think almost all of us, if not all of us have, as star seeds, have felt that at some point where we feel such a disillusionment with this planet. We feel such a disillusionment with the, the circumstances that our soul has put us in for whatever reason. And even with the people around us, our family doesn't understand us, your partner doesn't understand you, et cetera. And I've heard that from hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. And, you know, I'll get in into a moment kind of the soothing side of it. But I will say what I've found is that it is an illusion of the ego. The human ego <laughs> is, is something we come here to play with. It's something we come here to experience the ascension, the, our spiritual evolution through having a human ego and through having a human mind. And it's a manifestation of feeling you know, overwhelmed by the circumstances of our life, feeling overwhelmed by the, the darkness of the world. We live obviously in a very dark, cruel world. If we look at it objectively, there's a, a third of the 8 billion people on the planet are in starvation or, or just above starvation. It's sick. It, it's absolutely sick. And, and the planet is so toxic from the air to the water to the sky. So objectively, it's, it is a rough place to be here. So, you know, it, it's, it's like it, to the ego, it, it's the same sort of vibration as feeling like some people feel God left them behind. Some people feel that their parents abandoned them. It's being abandoned by blank. So it, it just gets spiritualized. And then the illusion is, oh, I never would have actually chosen to come to this gosh darn trash planet. I must have somehow been forced here or it must be a mistake. Now, the reality and to get to kind of the alchemy after kind of bringing up the dark side of it, the real light side of it and the truth of it is that one of the reasons that we come here as star beings, as star seeds is exactly to experience the density, is exactly to experience the darkness, because we're coming from places. If you come from Syrian realms or Pleiadian realms or Arcturian realms or wherever, or you come from being a, a star or a galaxy, you're coming from such an incredibly high vibration. There isn't the opportunity to experience darkness. On the surface, it sounds almost self-masochist. Like, why would we want to, you know, intentionally go and re-experience the darkness it's seen by the higher aspect of ourselves by the the star aspect of ourselves or the galactic as aspect as a challenge and it's not a challenge to like oh let's see how you know dark i i can get and see if i can get out of it if the challenge is 
can I go to a lower dimension or density, bring my light with me, know that I'm going to forget all that light through the law of amnesia, if we want to call it that, when we're born into a human body, we have generally have amnesia until this ascension life, a lot of us start to remember, right? But can I bring that light in with me, forget that I have that light, forget that I am that light, and experience the darkness of this place and then before i leave contribute something so valuable and so necessary that it's a it's an important piece of the puzzle for the ascension of the entire planet so we come here as service workers we first usually usually as star seeds we come here for hundreds or thousands of lifetimes and at first usually we want to go through a series of a whole bunch of lifetimes just experiencing life and experiencing a lot of rough lives where we might have died young or we might have died violently. And because we want to experience the whole gamut of the human experience. But at a certain point, it's as if a switch goes off. And this is what I call the ascension lifetime. And this is when we start to become awake and aware and we start to have remembrances of who we are and where we came from and the light that we bring. This is when we start to become attracted to shows like this to the spiritual books that are all over my bookshelves and probably some of yours. And we start to like, you know, like, like a mosquito to a, a, a you know, a, a zapper. Uh, we, we start to become attracted to spirituality and ascension. And by ascending out of the lower dimensions, and we're basically, it, it's like, if you go to a pool or you go to the ocean where there, you know, or, or a lake, where there's a swimming area and there's buoys. If you take one of the buoys and you push it down just for fun, you know, as a kid, I used to always like to go to the pool and sit on the buoy, right? And, and kind of try to ride it, right? But if you just push the buoy down underneath the surface of the water, well, you can hold the buoy there, but as soon as you let go, the buoy comes right up to the surface, right? Well, as star seeds, we're artificially pushing ourselves down into a lower vibration, down into earth, to challenge ourselves to rise back up vibrationally and eventually ascend out of the planet. But we don't ascend by just saying, F this place, I'm leaving. We ascend by implementing our light that we brought here, whether we remember it or not. Usually that's through some aspects of service work, helping others, teaching others, healing others, et cetera, healing ourselves. And through that, we, like we talked about in the beginning, we're all connected by a field. So we contribute that to the field and that contributes to the planetary ascension. And then at some point we say, you know what? Earth was fun. I, I, I really am excited and happy about what I was able to contribute to the planet. And now I'm going to go back to the Pleiades or go back to Sirius or whatever. But it's, it's a going back. When, when someday, any of you on this call, when you do go back, it'll be out of such a love and such a gratitude for the Earth experience. And such a, a, a love for what you were able to do on Earth. And when you get back to your home planet, the, the, the beings there that you know will be so excited and so proud of you. And they already are. That's why it's, it's really fun to connect with, you know, your brothers and sisters or, or family members or, or people that you know from the planet that you come from and communicate with them because they're already watching what you're doing here. And they're so proud of the work that you're doing here. And eventually when you go back, it's like a homecoming and they're going to be so proud of you. But that happens through you doing the work here, the spiritual work and evolving. And it doesn't always happen in the context of a single lifetime. A lot of times it takes many, but a lot of us are attempting to do it in one single lifetime right now. And that's what I call the Ascension Lifetime. Definitely the Ascension Lifetime. My experience of that really in this lifetime, and I've had several, I'll call it, life reviews in this life without having to die by the way yeah yeah life reviews and instead of being a spiral that runs on the horizon it runs vertically yeah and it feels like we're spiraling through several lifetimes in this one lifetime and it's, it's such an acceleration of consciousness and of really the dying off of karma so that we can expand into new experiences instead of being stuck in the loop 
in a repeating cycle that seems to have no end. So it's fascinating to do that. For those of you who really don't know how to get out of that, well, I don't know why I'm here. It's like, I'm suffering through this. I may be from the stars and I get that this isn't home. One of the ways to motivate you through this lifetime is to be of service to others, to do a kind act for someone else, to show up for someone else, instead of keep trying to show up in the confusion of ourselves, you'll find that when you can give from what you have, or another may not have it, that you gain so much from it, that it becomes this cycling of energy that's gifted back to you, not because you expect the cycling to come back to you, but that's just the way the natural order of the universe works. And when you know that and you can come from a place of compassion and love as you're giving from what you have, you have everything you need. You have everything you need. Yeah. And John, I, I just, I love your wisdom and I always have. And two things that you said there, I just want to even add on to uh, is the spiral. Yes. Ascension is a spiral. And what that means, practically speaking, is you're going to circle back. You're going to often circle back to the old self who you used to be and you'll have opportunities to be tested to see if you've stepped up in vibration a lot of times that means coming back and coming back to issues in a relationship or a family relationship sometimes it means coming back to a health challenge sometimes it means coming back to a challenge in your career however your soul decides to have you have the opportunity to experience those retests so to speak that's that's how it's a spiral and then you know that you've kind of gone to the next rung of the spiral when you are able to go about your life in a more i like the term spiritually mature way whether you're more grounded or whether you are more heart centered whether you come at a situation with more love than before whether you take an opportunity that you may have shied away from before or been afraid of right whatever however it manifests that's how you know you're moving up those rungs of the ascension spiral. And yet yeah, those acts of service, like you said, those are the things that get us outside of ourselves. We're always in here, aren't we? If we're not careful, if we're not doing meditation, if we're not getting out, you know, in whatever grounds us away from the mind, we're kind of in this place right here. One of the best things to get you outside of yourself is acts of service. And it also is one of the things that most easily opens that heart. And so many of us have experienced heartbreak or trauma or whatever it is, or grief, and our hearts maybe have closed in certain ways. When we get outside of ourselves and do nice things for others, it, it really helps to open it right back up. Yeah, yeah, it really does. All right, Matthew, let's get into some Q&A. Yeah. And, and again, we're going to dive into so much more information that's coming. Through. So, yeah, if people want to ask maybe like where you're from, I, you know, as a star seed, I think that would be great for this call if that's okay. Let's go to those questions. So that's, that's what we're going to focus on. Yeah. Now. And we're just going to dive right in. And Judy Fesner, let's go to you first. Welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here. All right. Um, and thank you for answering questions and, and a wonderful talk. I um yeah, I do have a question about the yeah. Starseed star family that I belong. I think I know, and I would like it verified. Um, and if you can give me um, a little definition on this on the the group that I belong to and and what their their tribute or yeah maybe tributes are or their characteristics are. Okay, so there's two ways we can go about it. Either you can tell me where you think you're from, or I can just kind of go with a blank slate and just see what I'm shown. Either way it will be good, and either way I can give you some traits for sure. Okay, I I guess Arcturian. Okay, so the Arcturians are very cerebral. Art, let me. The Arcturian ETs themselves, first of all, they're short. Um, they usually give off a navy, indigo, or purplish kind of skin color. They're holographic, but they do show up as, you know, they look like, you know, beings with, with a stature. And they uh, all, they usually don't have hair. They usually have very large eyes, which one of the differences between them and the Syrians, the Syrians are, they're lighter in shade. Usually they're bluer or, or bluer turquoise. And the Syrians have smaller eyes and are also taller. Uh, and the way they feel, the Arcturians are very cerebral, very high vibrational. 
they think in terms of mathematics and sound frequencies and um uh, in terms of of shapes uh, uh geometric geometric shapes sacred geometry on their planets the the way they form their cities they form them into these beautiful geometric patterns where all the, the buildings are crystal but they form them usually in these concentric circles and then there'll be different areas of the city where they form a different sacred geometrical pattern so they're very obsessed with sacred geometry and with with sound arcturian star seeds they tend to be first of all very intelligent or at least thinkers they tend to like language they tend to um be into science or math or sound you know like music especially so many arcturian star seeds find themselves super interested in music or playing music and they like to learn as much as they possibly can because knowledge is very important and it's kind of this virgo element you know it, it's a virgo type energy um does that feel like you yeah it does kind yeah. of so so <laughs> Arctur i found a lot of arcturian star seeds they end up finding themselves like when they enter their service path as sound healers uh using frequencies in their healing um, a lot of them end up uh, really in, enjoying, if it's not sound and music, then it's actually working with the plant kingdom and uh, like hydroponic growing, things like that. Anything where they're able to kind of, a lot of them like to create like physical structures. Like I, I know Arcturian starseeds that have created these like try, you know, pyramid things that you can meditate in or like a Metatron's cube that you can med meditate in. So if you are an Arcturian starseed, the more that you work with, the sacred geometry and sound that and, and language as as well those things help you to really kind of connect with that aspect of self if you'd like and if john you know if you want me to i can kind of ask to be shown uh to to verify or, I, or what? I, I don't i don't i don't want you to take up time i i'm actually a horticulturist by trade well doesn't that music, make sense <laughs> the music is really important to me exactly i, I i've known a lot of different arcturian star seeds that have been yeah. hard horticulturists or have you know had greenhouses or just been yeah. super interested in finding like more efficient uh ways to grow plants and uh yeah you know like playing frequencies and music and and uh things like to your plants that's a really arcturian star seed thing to do and i i love i love um i love geometry i love science yep. I love, yep. yeah I'm, I'm i'm a bit of a science nerd so me too I'm, and don't don't let this whole new age world where people are sometimes very like the term is woo woo um i'm a virgo moon i'm 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 extremely uh interested in science I love reading scientific journals and studies and medical studies. And I love to look at data more than anything. I, I look for evidence and things. So if you're someone that's super scientific, you are right at home here in this whole spiritual world. You're meant to bring more of that into the spiritual world as I endeavor to do. And I love, I love sacred geometry. I, I've yeah. been studying yeah. it a lot lately. So. Thank you so Good. much. Uh, awesome. Well, you're definitely, definitely an Arcturian. Then. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like an Arcturian now. <laughs> definitely are, yep. <laughs> definitely. Blue skin and all. Thank Blue you so much. Too. Thanks, Judy. Um, then, then, then let's go to Patty McGuire. Welcome to the call. Oops. Hey, John. Thank you. Hi, Matthew. Hi. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready to hear what star seed. Sure. Okay. All right. So, show really me Patty. This call. So, so, when I do like the, you know, calls, you know, kind of just not really knowing i'm gonna close my eyes i'm gonna to ask to be shown and sometimes it takes a few seconds sometimes a little bit longer but i'll just be silent during the process so show me where patty is i have my thought about it but we'll wait to see what matthew comes through with so I, I'm definitely sure that originally you come from the Andromeda galaxy, and I can really see that almost galactic traveler, well, not almost, that galactic traveler archetype, as I call it, in the Milky Way. I definitely pick up the Lyrans. I definitely pick up the Arcturians again and the Syrians. And there may be others, but I would be pretty sure about those four. Uh, and yeah, that's great, John, that you also picked up the Lyrans. 
and Andromeda. Yeah, both. And oh, both. Good, good. Yeah. Um, you, uh, my sense is that you probably came here as a soul from Lyra, but before coming to Lyra, you had had these expeditions. We could call it many incarnations in Arcturian realms, Syrian realms, and there may be others as well. So what, what does she do with this information? Matt? Oh yeah. Well, uh, first of all, study more about it. Um, get one of my packages. So you get that overview of ET races call. So you can learn all about those and everybody else. Uh, you know, let's do a, a private session so that we can help you understand what it is that you wanted to really bring here, you know, um, as, as a soul coming from Lyra. You know, to me, I, I just, here, let me, let me look into it briefly. I'll give you a little preview. So you know, I, I see you as see, there's many different types of lyrans. Some lyrans look like lion, they have lion heads, some lyrans look like more cat heads, felines, and some look more humanoid. I actually see you as one of the lion type lyrans very tall very wide very big lion head and i just get that there's something in your whole purpose here with animals and children and there's something to give back to those two populations on the planet and you're probably already doing that in some capacity but there may be some you know specific things that will augment that mission uh so I would love, you know, to go further in a in a private session uh, if you do one of the packages, Patty. Yeah, definitely. Wow, thank you, and thank you, John, for asking that question because I was thinking the same thing. That's a lot. What do I do with it? And yeah, yeah. I definitely love animals and and, yeah. and love children. I don't have children, but I, I mean, and I, I felt that. But I, I, I and a lot of times there's, well, not a lot of times. Always there's a specific reason from the perspective of your soul. Obviously, you've had children in other lifetimes. There's also been a particular lifetime, which was you were a child and died as a child, and it was very tragic. It was a wartime situation. And there's some piece of that karma still existing in your energy field where you're trying to rebalance that, alchemize that in this lifetime. And although your soul made the conscious decision to not have children, there is still something I, I don't know if it's a children's book or if it's if it's a, something a YouTube series or something or if it's someone else's kids, you know, family members' kids that you're having this positive impact or all of it. Um, but but there is some something to that. Wow, thank you. I'm definitely gonna get in with a session. Awesome. Yeah, well, I look because, forward. Yeah, I definitely. It's the with the children piece. Yeah, um, I do have this natural propensity to always to want to protect children and really yeah. protecting their yeah. innocence. Yes. And like perpetuating that. And how do you do yep. this and navigating that in today's world? So, you, and, you and that, and, and a lot of that comes from this one particular, very tragic lifetime. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, do do package C if it works for you. We have a two payment option for you and everybody. Uh, if you do package C, you get two private sessions with me. You get three months of my Ascending as One group program, 10 master classes, and you get priority booking. So you can get in as soon as this weekend with me for the private awesome. session. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Wonderful. And the star seeds and the expansion and the awareness and the character traits and maybe giving us more of a propensity into feeling what, why did we come here? But what would you tell people who are so obsessed that they have to know and they don't know why and they have to know their past lives, they have to know what planet they came from and they're so they're so obsessed with that that none of the work is really being done. They're not really... I'll say it's they find it I, they find it difficult to show up in in their soul mission because they're so trying to land this mental space of of something that might make well sense. that's a fascinating question and sometimes John that is part of the mission it has been for me hmm. so that obsessive seeking I have always been like that in whatever whatever foray I've taken into different areas of life, sports, entertainment, et cetera. Even before I got into this space, I was obsessive about my work and I was obsessive about discovering and learning as much as I can. When I got into this new age space, it's been a constant obsession of wanting to understand myself and wanting to understand 
everything I possibly can. And there actually are some people that are like that and they're going to end up teaching it in some way. And that's why their soul is leading them down this path of knowledge seeking. So if you're someone like John says, that is obsessed with seeking knowledge, well, what if that knowledge accumulation is a big part of your mission because you're actually supposed to teach that knowledge in some way to be able to expand that to others? Because again, this is still such a, a small niche that we're in. And there's a whole world out there of people that haven't yet discovered the sort of ancient and, and galactic knowledge that we're coming across. Now, the other possibility is that you haven't, you, you've gone, like you mentioned, John, into the mental space a lot, and you've done a lot of that knowledge seeking, but you haven't put enough. So imagine you put all your energy kind of up here into that seeking of knowledge, but you haven't put enough energy into, let's say, the lower chakras, into the practical application, into the practical living of your life. And people like that can become stuck in kind of loops of seeking and seeking and seeking and just jumping from book to book to book and, and teacher to teacher to teacher and not necessarily seeing their life change for the better. And for those people, it's about busting through obstacles that you haven't been able to yet. Those obstacles are going to be in the lower three chakras. So those are going to be very earthly obstacles like health challenges like career like actual career stuff financial stuff right it's gonna it might be about moving to a new location it might be about having the courage to end a relationship it might be having the courage to jump into a new relationship it might be having the courage to just be alone right but there's something in your real life in your physical 3d life that you haven't yet fully been able to bust through and the key word in what you're overcoming or attempting to overcome there is fear. There's fear on some level that maybe at times through, you know, taking classes or having readings or coaching sessions, you've gotten close. Like this is like the, the you know, the fear gate right here. You've gotten just up there and then, you know, you, you, you run back, but it's about busting through that. And that's when you'll be able to become more balanced and integrated between the mental side and the living life side. We could call it more balance between the upper chakras and the lower chakras. Yeah, and the big distinction between the two as you describe them and the seeking knowledge and accumulating and really deep diving so that you can extrapolate and teach others, if you will. Yeah, that's uh, one category of people, as I said, like myself, yeah. But in that part of it, there's a satiation to the knowledge and you move forward. There's some that... If you're in that, there's an I application, would... right? It, it it gets applied eventually somehow, right? Yeah. And if you're in the constant searching, but this person told me this and this person told me, and I need confirmation again, I need confirmation again, but I need confirmation one more time. There's a nervous system point where you just can't move, where you're not moving forward and there's not a satiation no matter what information you receive. Yeah. And that's that second category that I, I was alluding to. Yeah. And so again, I wanted to give you all a distinct visceral awareness like you can you can tap into how you're feeling as you receive and you apply or receive and keep searching and it can really just take your seeking to hold other levels by understanding how your body and your mind is responding to the information and given to you john one of one of the things that i adore about you out of many things is I, you know, I am a feeler and I can feel the energy you emanate and it is very grounding. Although you, you talk in terms of very abstract and up there concepts, you are very good at being able to actually apply it and ground it for people so they can actually have a more fulfilling, fun, pleasurable, exciting experience of their life of their real 3d life and i try to do the same for for my people i always try to practicalize whatever knowledge that i'm teaching and a lot of times during these 20 minute private sessions for example what we're doing is we're talking about your relationship we're talking about your job we're talking about whether you should move or not we're talking about what is going on within you that your finances are so messed up we're talking about the real world stuff because you can't avoid that stuff before we get into your channeling. Yeah. What if someone's not, it's like, 
okay, I don't really get the starseed conversation. I really hadn't had that connection. Um, the conversation is kind of cool, but so what? So what? So what that you're a galactic extraterrestrial that, that actually is just pretending to be a human? What do you mean, so what? No, I understand what you're saying. Um, well, first of all, I think that the more that you look into it and feel into it over time, you know, it's not a panacea to all your problems in any sense at all. What it is, it's another piece of the puzzle to who you are. I mean, to me, I find it fascinating the more pieces of the puzzle that I, I put together in my own, just who I am. You know, we start off just realizing, okay, this are this is my parents, this is the town I'm born in, etc. But you know, then we're like, oh my God, I was this in other lifetimes. My looking back through my ancestral lineage, I was this, you know, my ancestors were this and this and this. And then, you know, this is another piece, like, oh, I'm actually a soul that's from the stars. What does that mean? It's all just pieces of the puzzle. None of it is is necessarily more important than the other. But as a whole, if we just look at it as a whole, the more that you, the more the way I see it, and this may just be, be me as a thinker. I'm definitely a thinker. I'm like the, who was that statue? The thinker. The thinker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but who was it? Was oh, that? Yeah. Huh? I don't know who it was. Plato, right? Oh, Plato, yes, oh, no. yes. I'll, I'll unmute you guys. Don't need, yeah, I'll, I'll work it out. Oh, Rodan, Rodan, Rodan. Okay, thank you, Rodan. But um, to me, the, the more that we have a, a whole view of who we actually are, it helps us to work with ourselves better. That's, a, that's the same reason why understanding what your natal chart means is so helpful, because you understand your own tendencies better. You understand why there's these certain obstacles in your life that you keep bucking up against. Like when I did the reading for one of the callers earlier and, 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 you know, I told her about the past life that was tragically ended young as a child. And she's like, you know, yeah, I, I have such this sense of needing to protect children in this lifetime. Well, just knowing like the, the, the root uh, reasons for who you are, what you focus on, the type of people you bring into your life experience and what your preferences are, all of that, it, it, there's roots in other lifetimes. There's roots if you're starseed outside of Earth. And we can also see it through the context of astrology. But I'd say the more you know yourself, at least the way I've found life to be, the more you know yourself, the easier it is to work with yourself compassionately and to be able to create the best version of yourself. Yeah, it was interesting. It, it was good quite a few years ago it, for me it was about the christed consciousness and the awakening of the heart and all that was really resonant for me for the longest time as as i had different experiences of angelics coming to me and 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 being shown teaching dreams and and having floating guides coming and and i didn't know quite specifically who they were but i knew that they were here to awaken something within me and it was one year it was probably about 8 years ago that i started having these downloads that were galactic and they came in waves of like three months at a time and they came from different systems and information that was being transmitted and something awoke in me about the starseed connection mm. and it just it all integrated as part of a whole instead of a separation and mm -hmm. what that opened up in me was so profound because I was ready for I was ready within myself to to dive into uh, and explore an origin that I hadn't before. And I had been, I'd experienced reptilian energy. I had experienced mm. some of uh, the warring energies before this even galactic part opened up. Mm -hmm. And the star seed origins that that I knew that I was a part of, all of a sudden, it's like my brain was being retweaked and, yeah. and to receive in a way that I hadn't before. So it's profound. It's profound what happens. Um, Matthew, I want to take another caller before we get into the yeah, absolutely, yeah, into the channel. And, and you know, just just uh, just briefly to parlay off what you just said, think of the difference in how in the possibilities you can see for your life and for the world. If you know, let's say starting is where I came from, being an atheist, where it just seems like this is the only life you live. Everything is random. 
And there's really no point other than to just kind of enjoy as best you can. It's kind of a hedonistic view, right? And then all the way to the other side of the spectrum of I am a super high vibrational, expanded, literally holographic being or literally a star or literally an entire galaxy just here to play, just here to help this planet along. It, and then you look at things like all of the war and all the all the BS that's going on in the world. And you can actually look at the world with a sense of hope and a sense of compassion because you realize that it was meant to be like this, that you knew coming here, this planet was going to be like this. It was going to be messed up like this. And you are here to help. You're here to be of service versus if, if you have just this more of a like a horse blinders sense of awareness of who you are, whether that's through atheism or Christianity or, or whatever, uh, you know, you can feel just hopeless. You, you can very easily feel hopeless. Amazing. All right. Let's go to our next color. And again, we're getting into the Syrian channeling as well. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Catalina. Welcome to the call. Hey, I'm so excited you called on me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I just recently had an Akashic reading. Okay. Um, and they told me I was a star seed. So okay. I'm, I'm so curious now about all they of They didn't this. tell you where? No. Okay. <laughs> Seems incomplete, but all right, I'll I'll try to fill it. Maybe it was supposed to be incomplete so you could get the the I rest of it. Here, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let me just take a look. Okay. All right. So I, and I know, I know these beings very well and I know, cause again, it's a part of my own history, but uh, have you ever heard of the blue avians? No. The avian beings. So um, I actually have a statue here of Thoth. Have you heard of Thoth? No. Oh, I love Thoth. Right. This is, uh, this is Thoth, you know, an Egyptian uh, a deity. There you huh? go. Yeah, yeah. I can't see myself right now on Zoom. So I'm just pretending uh, like i can see myself but <laughs> there, there all right anyways um you know you can see the the bird head right i'm quite sure that thoth is uh is a blue avian being the blue avians are super high vibrational uh high dimensional race of beings or group of beings they are very tall they are kind of part bird part human they generally have that long beak they generally have um feathers in the back Fascinatingly enough, what we found, and this was through not only my own journey, but two separate clients doing hypnosis journeys with me to look into the Blue Avians, was uh, that as they get older and as they have certain achievements in their life, you know, on their own planet, they actually get different colors. So as they, as they pass like certain soul lessons, as, as they accomplish certain things for their village or their collective, they actually get these certain colored feathers on their back and as as like a you know a sign is like an award essentially but it just it just happens it's just the feather on its own uh comes into that color uh blue avian star seeds on earth they and, and i know being one uh we first of all there's something to be being very attracted to the idea of flight and the idea of birds in general I have many bird feeders. I love just observing birds. I love listening to how they talk, um, trying to, you know, translate what they're saying to each other. I love watching them, you know, either fighting or, or you know, sometimes they do that little dance because they're like basically dating. Um, and I've always, ever since I was a kid, I've just loved air travel. People get so stressed about air travel. I'm excited. I'm like, yes, I get to go in the sky. So there's that aspect, aspect but there's also this aspect of being able to see patterns in what's going on because if you think of the metaphor of a bird being able to take a bird's eye view on the whole planet itself and then just on uh, any sort of theme in general and blue avian star seeds tend to be able to kind of see great bigger patterns and things that some people others don't see blue avian star seeds actually can often do well in iq tests because of that because iq tests 
are, you know, based on uh, how well one can see patterns primarily, right? But there's this thing with seeing patterns. There's also um, an attraction to art. Uh, the Blue Avians uh, really are, are, are deep into uh, painting and, and creating all sorts of different art, both with their hands and their beaks. And uh, what, we, what we saw on some of the expeditions there, you know, in the astral plane is that a lot of them lived in these giant, giant trees. Like, like you can imagine like the redwoods that we have in California, but like 10 times wider. And they build essentially these apartments. Instead of nests, they have beds, but they build these apartments on different levels of the tree. And we think that they exist in a part of the Milky Way on the fringe uh, of the Milky Way galaxy, but actually in a different uh, dimension where their stars aren't visible, which is a thing actually for a lot of different groups that aren't, especially the ones that aren't the, the primary ones we talked about, you know, already the Arcturians, Pleiadians, et cetera. They often are existing at a different vibration where we can't see them. But all that being said, if you feel into that, if you feel into that avian, the flight, the bird, the patterns, the how does that feel to you? Um, well, I love art and I see patterns very easily. You work um, with colors very well? Yeah, colors. They're, they're very much into seeing that whole range of colors. Like, whereas I said, the Arcturians are more about sound and patterns. The blue avians are very much about the, the color palette. Mm -hmm. And I see like patterns and symbols and events yep. and, and things like that. And I love trees. Yeah, me when too. I, was a girl, me I, too. I used to dance under this tree. So when, when I was a kid, um, I, I think my mom still has this. When I was a kid, I used to just in class, whenever we had like, oh, you know, have everyone draw, I would always draw trees. Always. I love, yes, me too. Me and I always hug, I literally, I, I always say goodnight to these two main trees that overlook my house, that watch over me. I always say goodnight to them before bed. And uh, I, I hug as many trees as I can on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm the weirdo uh, tree hugger uh, of, of the neighborhood. I'll tell you that. Okay, thank you. I was just You're welcome. So look more into them. If you get one of my packages, I go more in depth on that overview VT races call that mm -hmm. you get as part of the packages. And you know, if if you do uh any of the packages, you can get a private session. We can go more in depth about specific purposes and missions that you wanted to bring from those mm -hmm. blue avian realms uh, here. And it and it's great to talk to another blue avian because I am one. Great. Yes, that's what I'd be curious about. Thank you. Yeah. Catalina, thank you so much for your call. And for thank you. Question. All right, y'all. Before we get into the channel Syrian transmission, yeah. Uh, well, Matthew, why don't you start tuning in and I'll get, kind of do a little. Okay, so let's do that. I'm actually going to lower the volume. Uh, I'll, I'll mute the volume coming out of my speakers so I can just get in tune. And then as soon as I'm ready, I'll just pop my you know, volume back on. Just come on in. And while Matthew's doing that, y'all, the, the link for the special offer again, three packages to choose from, um, is in the chat box. You'll find it at the very bottom of the chat box or open up a new browser. And if you don't buy it now, just keep the tab open. Um, but go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Matthew 31. It'll take you to the same page. If you choose package C, you get VIP seating appointment settings. So you can book sooner rather than later. Um, and today's call, we're going to have the replay for it for the rest of the week. So um, we'll send a link out for that a little bit later. And you can always access replays by going to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash replay. And why is this starseed conversation so resonant for me? Because I know what it's awakened in me by having, by having an awareness. Greetings, friends. We come to you and we understand we are speaking to a new audience, and we thank our channel for the opportunity to be with a new audience today. And we thank all of you for joining us here. We have wondered what our channel would like for us to discuss during today's transmission, and our channel has given us free reign to discuss whatever we would like. And what we are feeling today is to discuss the importance of the heart to discuss the importance of being with the heart frequency and being in tune with your natural vibration of who you naturally are 
it, whether you are an animal or a human or any type of being anywhere in this great galaxy or any of the great galaxies in our wonderful universe, your natural source is the same. Your source is the same. It is one of light. Who you are, your essence is one of light, no matter who you are or where you come from. So often we notice that many of you do get lost in cycles of excessive thinking, excessive identification with who you believe you are, excessive identification with what your mind is discussing with you. Sometimes for many of you, we understand this is all day and all night. Well, for this and in general, we would be honored to remind you of who you really are, and that is simply light. And we would invite you in this moment, if you would like, or any time that you remember to, to simply get in touch with that frequency through the heart. You can get in touch with that frequency through the physical location, the center point of your being. If you draw a line down your mid your midsection and then another line dissecting you in half, you'll find that center point where that heart chakra exists. And it is through that heart chakra, it is through that point in your body that it is very that you can very easily access this frequency of love and this pure essence of light that you truly are. We we chuckle now when we we think of this because here on our planet we have so long ago mastered what it means to truly love one another and what it means to truly work together with all of each other for common goals and we sometimes see what is going on on other planets like yours where you've not yet achieved as high of a frequency as we have both with compassion and <laughs> we will admit with a, a sense of humor because we do find it so silly all of the fighting constantly going on on your planet not just on a scale of between nation states, but uh, within your own families, within your own uh, circles and your, your jobs, and even, <laughs> even on the roads when we observe you driving around. And we, we too, uh, from a, a sense of compassion, but yes, with humor as well, find it uh, to be quite silly. And we would remind you that if everyone uh, just for a moment were able to tap into that heart frequency, that love frequency that you are and you always are and you cannot not be, uh, but all together uh, for just one moment, of course, there would be no more suffering, there would be no more war, there would be no more hurting one another on this planet that you call home. There would be no more polluting this planet that you call home. But of course, we do understand that you are the early awakeners, and we honor you for being those early awakeners. We applaud you for being those early awakeners. We find it so, uh, we could say, courageous that you have decided to come from wherever you come from, whether it's from our Syrian realms or from the Pleiades or any of the uh, other myriad of places that star seeds uh, choose to come from, whether in our great galaxy or outside of our great galaxies and any of the other great galaxies in our wonderful benevolent universe. And we applaud you for being the first awakeners. We applaud you for having the courage to move through the emotional density that you may have brought in that you probably brought in from other lifetimes and even some of the density that you brought into this earthly experience from other places in our great galaxy. And we applaud you for being part of this early group of awakening beings. And we know, we acknowledge that sometimes it can be quite difficult, quite trying and uh, quite painful. Uh, many of you, we understand and we witness having physical issues that are quite painful and quite difficult to deal with. And we would like to remind you that no matter the experience of your life on any given day or in any given hour, minute or second, it is all from a loving purpose that you, uh, the true you, the soul you, you might call it, have decided to experience whatever it is that you've chosen to experience on earth for a very specific purpose. 
and nothing is ever wrong. Nothing, uh, you've never gone off path. And we see so many of you questioning yourselves all the time. We see so many of you wondering if you, you're a victim of, of some cruel joke or of, of, of a, 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 a God that is, is not actually loving. And we are here to remind you that no matter your temporary experiences, all uh, it is true that this too shall pass and all shall always pass. And here from the place that we speak to you from, we exist in a, an ever-present experience of, of life. The, our two suns rise and then they fall over the horizon one after the other. And regardless of whether it's day or twilight or even our short nights, it is always now and we always enjoy it as now. We understand with compassion and yes, with a bit of humor, of course, that having a human ego and a human mind is there's a lot of weight and a lot of density to that. And it, it takes spiritual development on your planet to be able to exist in the present moment and, and exist while tapping into that heart frequency, that loving frequency in the present moment. But we are here to remind you that that skill is something you already know that skill is something that is natural to you because your natural sense your your natural self is light and thus by simply returning to the light again in your body it is the heart chakra by returning to the light more and more on a daily basis and by returning to presence by returning to honoring the present moment no matter what your experience acknowledging and surrendering to that you have chosen this experience as a soul then you will start to come more into the experience of what we feel on a daily basis what you likely felt before you came to this beautiful planet that you're on before you made that decision to come and again we applaud all of you for being on this journey and we thank you for allowing us to have this forum with this new audience today through our channel, and we bid you farewell. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful message, y'all. Wow. And as we wind up tonight, when you channel this and from the same, do you remember what's being said? Uh, not really until a little bit after. I know every trans channel is different, but personally, I, I feel like I just took some drugs and I'm just, I get really out of it and then you know it, uh, it takes me a little while to ground afterward mm -hmm. um and then i tend to remember bits and pieces but uh i <laughs> no i i don't rem <laughs> remember all indication. of it and that's an indication for me of, of channeling that's happening even though your voice may not change or because some people are used to voice changings and all that it's for me really it's an indication if if as it's coming through you that because it's so foreign that it takes a while to assimilate if it assimilates at all in the way that we can transcribe it and repeat it back. So phenomenal, phenomenal. Matthew, thank you so much for everybody. <laughs>